be honest, this may have been the hardest list to come up with. I didn't realize when I first came up with the idea of this list that there would be so many iconic duos in the Resident Evil franchise to choose from. From the original game, having three potential candidates, to RE6 featuring three campaigns that focus on two characters each. The franchise loves delivering iconic duos in each of their games. So in today's episode of Nerd Space, I decided that I'm going to take up the very difficult task of selecting the top 10 best duos of the franchise. Please, please understand that this is mostly my opinion. I'm taking the CGI movies and the video games into consideration when making this list, but I guarantee you that there will be some choices on today's list that you won't agree with. And that's fine, just be sure to let me know your personal list in the comments below. But before we get started, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content that I bring you guys. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. Anyway, this is Ruben with Nerdspace Games with my top 10 best duos in Resident Evil. Let's get it. Number 10, Rebecca and Billy, Resident Evil Zero. You expect me to trust you, a wanted felon? I don't need your help. I can handle this on my own. And don't call me little girl. All right, Miss Do-It-Yourself. What should I call you? The name is Rebecca Chambers, but that's Officer Chambers to you. We start today's list off with the rookie medic on stars, Rebecca Chambers. Prior to the events of the original game, Rebecca and the rest of Bravo team investigate the Arclay Mountains after reports of brutal animal attacks. Unlike the game that follows, RE0 sort of contradicts Rebecca's personality and talent. Whereas the original game depicts Rebecca as a damsel in distress, RE0 makes her feel more like a capable soldier who could handle anything thrown at her. Despite the improvements and contradictions made to her character though, Rebecca learns that she can't survive the night alone. This leads to her teaming up with a prisoner, Billy Cohen. Throughout the night, Billy and Rebecca find themselves facing off against zombies, giant monsters, and a co-founder of Umbrella, James Marcus. To survive, the two begin to rely heavily on each other which leads to both of them saving each other on different occasions. The odd couple eventually work together and survive the night, which ultimately led to Rebecca allowing Billy to escape while she made her way over to the Spencer Mansion. Sure, I would have preferred Enrico or Richard as Rebecca's partner in RE0, but when all is said and done, Billy Cohen wasn't a completely awful choice as a second protagonist opposite of Rebecca. Number 9, Jake and Cherry, Resident Evil 6. What happened to your father? His research killed him. By the time he died, his body had mutated so much, he wasn't even recognizable. Sorry, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to. That's all right. RE6 features a total of four campaigns. Of the four campaigns, my least favorite was Jake's. Unfortunately, the gameplay of his campaign was a far cry from any Resident Evil game prior to this one, and not in a good way. With that being said, the campaign wasn't all bad. Actually, a major positive from RE6 came in the form of Jake and Sherry's relationship. As both of them are children of men that did bad things, Jake and Sherry have a very unique connection that made them stand out more than most duos in the franchise. As the daughter of William Birkin and as the son of Albert Wesker, the two could not be more perfect for each other. And while Sherry had Leon and Claire to show her the way and help her to become a good person to make up for the things that her father did, Jake didn't have those role models. Instead, he found himself involved with mercenary work. But after meeting Sherry and building a relationship with her throughout the events of RE6, Jake found himself becoming a better person just like Sherry. Again, I'm not a fan of the action style of combat that his campaign took, but I gotta say, the scenes between Sherry and Jake made it a lot more bearable as we watched the children of the two biggest villains of the series become the next generation of heroes. Or they were supposed to be, but yeah, that doesn't seem to be going anywhere anymore now. Number 8, Chris and Claire, Resident Evil, Code Veronica. Chris, promise me, please promise that you won't leave me alone again. I'm sorry, Claire, but it's not over yet. There's still something we've got to do. You mean... Yeah, it's payback time. We've got to destroy Umbrella. Despite being siblings, Claire and Chris have only appeared in one game together. In Code Veronica, we find Claire captured and locked up on Rockford Island while she's searching for her brother, Chris. Eventually, Chris finds out about this from Leon and ultimately sets his sights on Rockford Island. While Chris and Claire don't interact much throughout the game until we get closer to the end, they both get plenty of opportunities to prove how badass they are. Also, throughout the events of the game, we get to learn more about the relationship that these two have. 
Considering that Claire infiltrated an Umbrella secret base to find Chris, and Chris traveled to Rockford Island and then to the Antarctic base to rescue Claire, it's clear to all of us that these two would do anything to protect each other, which of course makes them one of the most dangerous pair of siblings in video games. Basically, the lesson here, don't fuck with the Redfield. Wait, you attacked the island. And my sister. Number seven, Jill and Barry, Resident Evil. Barry. Forgive me. No, you're not to blame. It's Umbrella and Wesker. Even if it meant my family, I couldn't bear turning my back on my friends again. While Chris and Rebecca were a memorable duo in the original game, Jill and Barry had a lot more interaction and a closer relationship than Chris and Rebecca did. Unlike those two, Barry and Jill were on the same Stars Alpha team, whereas Chris made it seem like he barely knew Rebecca when they first met in the Spencer Mansion. And while Rebecca was playable in certain moments of Chris's scenario, we found Barry saving Jill multiple times throughout the Spencer Mansion. Whether it was saving her from being turned into a Jill sandwich, or coming in the nick of time to burn the hell out of Plant 42, Barry appeared to always be there for Jill. Of course, the relationship wasn't perfect. With Wesker kidnapping Barry's family, Barry was forced to betray Jill and the rest of Stars. But eventually, Barry was able to redeem himself when he couldn't stand by and let Wesker kill Jill. Ultimately, Barry was a more impactful partner than Rebecca was to Chris, and even though he was a traitor, you can't help but understand why he did what he did. Plus, the fact that he was able to still turn on Wesker when his family was at stake showed how much he truly cared about Jill. Number six, Leon and Ada, multiple games. If I'm gonna finish this case, you're the last hope I've got. I'm not just gonna leave you here. What if you're attacked? What if you need help? I'll be fine. Don't worry about me. Let's face it, Ada is not exactly the most trustworthy partner that Leon has had, but she does get the job done. When you look at their past together, Leon and Ada have worked together really well in order to survive and achieve different goals. While there is definitely chemistry between the two, Ada has always gone down a path that Leon doesn't agree with. Because of that, the two are usually at odds with each other in terms of their missions. Still, there's a perfect quote for this dynamic duo. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. Despite never being on the same side, the two always seem to find a common enemy that puts them together in order to complete their missions. Rather, it's Umbrella, Wesker, Sadler, or Simmons. Leon and Ada will always find themselves drawn to each other, regardless of their different viewpoints and how the world should work. For that reason, it's hard to ignore the success that the two always bring and the amount of times we always find them working together to defeat some pretty insane monsters throughout the franchise. Number 5, Joe and Carlos, Resident Evil 3. This isn't the last ride out of town, right? Do not worry. Once the civilians are safe, the train will be back. It's all right. You're going ahead. But I'm not going to die on you and leave you in a cold, cruel, Carlosless world. Okay. Honestly, I went back and forth between Carlos and Barry as to which one made a better partner for Jill. And while I personally like Barry more than Carlos, the fact is that Carlos had a few more traits that helped him be a slightly better duo partner than Barry. Sure, Barry was forced to betray her because his family was being held hostage, but I don't think it's fair to discount Carlos's loyalty to Jill throughout the events of Resident Evil 3 just because of that. Plus, I feel like Carlos and Jill take on a lot more dangers in the third entry than Barry and Jill did in the Spencer Mansion. Keep in mind that Carlos and Jill had to face an entire city of infected all the while they were being chased by Nemesis, the ultimate B.O.W. And when you take that into consideration, plus the fact that Carlos also rescues Jill and you toss in Carlos's likability in the remake, then it's hard not to appreciate him and Jill as a duo a little more than Barry and Jill. Don't crucify me though, as I know there are a lot of Barry and Jill fans out there. And yes, I do know there is that non-canon ending of the original Resident Evil 3 where Barry rescues Carlos and Jill at the end, but honestly, I don't see that really changing my opinion, even if it was canon. Number four, Chris and Sheva, Resident Evil 5. No! There's something about Chris that allows him to connect more with characters than any other main protagonist of Resident Evil. A perfect example of this is Resident Evil 5. 
this by bringing in a brand new character instead of just teaming him up with his old partner Joe. RE5 focuses on Chris and Sheva, a BSAA agent in the West African division. Throughout the events of RE5, we learn about Sheva's past with Umbrella and why she joined the BSAA. Because of their past, Chris and Sheva immediately begin to build a strong relationship as Chris learns to trust in his new partner and move on past his fear of losing her. Sheva and Chris take down multiple monsters throughout the campaign until they eventually face off against Jill and Wesker. After saving Jill, the two continue to follow Wesker and Chris and Sheva do what Jill and Chris failed to do before. They kill Albert Wesker. Considering that this duo brought down one of the most infamous villains in video games history, it's kind of hard not to respect them as one of the best and most iconic duos of the series. Number 3. Chris and Pierce, Resident Evil 6 do you even care about our mission anymore? Shut up! I feel sorry for all the men that died believing in you. What happened to the legendary Chris Redfield, huh? What happened to you? It's a good thing Finn's not around to see you this way. That's right, Chris and Pierce claim the title of third best duo in the series. While Leon and Helena's campaign may be my favorite of the game and Jake and Sherry may be the perfect match for each other, the fact is that the story and relationship between Chris and Pierce throughout the campaign is both more impactful and interesting than the other duos in Resident Evil 6. In this game, Chris has become a different person as the war against BOWs has taken a massive toll on him. After losing his entire squad at the beginning of the game, Chris is clouded by revenge. This leads him to make bad decisions, which ultimately cost the lives of more soldiers. Throughout this journey, we see Pierce struggling and trying to believe in Chris while also trying to bring him back from the edge of no return. Eventually, with Leon's help, Chris returns to himself and both Chris and Pierce set out to stop Carla. Unfortunately, this path eventually leads to Pierce sacrificing himself to rescue Chris by injecting himself with the C-Virus. Then, we get one of the saddest moments and a tearful goodbye from Pierce as he forces Chris into the escape pod and sends him to the surface. What's really rough about this ending is that Pierce really looked like he could be the future of the franchise. With Chris giving hints of the idea by telling Pierce that he's the future of the BSAA and Pierce being the angel on Chris's shoulder, it came to a massive shock to us all when Pierce died instead of Chris. Some even say that they think Capcom made a mistake by killing Pierce over Chris. Still, as a Chris fanboy, I'm glad that the guy's still alive and kicking. For now, at least. Number 2, Leon and Claire, Resident Evil 2. Damn it. You know what that means? Yeah. Dinner time. Claire, I think you should go. Don't worry about me, Leon. You take care of yourself. Uh, you need to go. Now. Okay. Let's get through this. Both of us. Despite not really interacting much in their original game together, Leon and Claire is still one of the most iconic duos of the franchise. Hell, they are probably the most recognizable duo with casual fans. Leon and Claire find themselves in Raccoon City just moments after the outbreak started. By the time they arrive in Raccoon City, the town has mostly been taken over by zombies and infected. With very few survivors left, Leon and Claire must find a way out of the city before it's too late. Leon as a rookie cop and Claire, a young woman searching for her brother Chris, have little to no experience when dealing with combat. Yet they somehow defy all odds and survive an entire city of monsters. With both of them being hunted down by Mr. X, stalked by William Birkin, and attacked by liquors, zombies, and other infected, the two must work alongside Ada and Sherry in order to escape the city alive. While they make this list completely off of their story of escaping Raccoon City together, the fact is that Leon and Claire probably spend more time together on screen than most duos on today's list. Sure, RE2 is technically the only game that they both appear in, but when you take into consideration the CGI movies, then you'll notice that at the very least they've been involved with a total of four outbreaks minimum. Death Island, Infinite Darkness, Degeneration, and of course Resident Evil 2 all include both Leon and Claire. Anyway, before I move on to the final entry on today's list, I want to give a little shout out to some other duos in the series that just barely miss out on breaking the top 10 best duos of Resident Evil. I found a file in the lab. Apparently, there's still a lot of tyrant virus here. We should blow this whole place up. Right. The show must go on. I'll leave that up to you, Rebecca. Too many good agents have died here today. You're not getting added to that list. 
Leon. Number one, prison jail, multiple games. Leon and Claire may have appeared together the most in the CGI movies, but Chris and Jill definitely claim the title for most games together. Starting from the original game, Chris and Jill have been partners since the very beginning of the franchise. While neither one is seen much in their own scenarios of the first game, both of them do eventually make it out alive after escaping the Spencer Mansion. From here, timeline-wise, we don't see them together again until Umbrella Chronicles, where we see Jill and Chris locating an Umbrella base in Europe in one final mission to bring down Umbrella for good. After doing so, we fast forward to Revelations, which follows Chris and Jill as they join the BSAA. Even though they are not partners anymore, Chris and Jill eventually get back together in the second half of the game as they take down Jack Norman. Not long after the events of this game, we find ourselves in the Lost and Nightmares DLC for RE5. Here, Chris and Jill track down Wesker while searching for Oswald E. Spencer. After facing off against him, Jill appears to sacrifice herself to kill Wesker and to save Chris. A reoccurring theme for Chris's partners, huh? Ultimately though, this fails as both are shown to be alive in Resident Evil 5. And in this game, Wesker uses a device to control Jill and force her to fight against Chris. By teaming up with Sheva, Chris is able to save Jill and she later returns the favor by rescuing Sheva and Chris from a volcano moments before the two blow up Wesker with rocket launchers. Unfortunately, we don't see Chris and Jill reuniting in the games after this, perhaps due to Jill's guilt over letting Wesker take control of her body. We do however get to see them reunite in a CGI movie, Death Island. Here we see Jill and Chris connect more as Chris helps Jill get over the past regarding what she did in RE5. Overall, this duo is the only one that continues to appear again and again throughout the series together. And with rumors that both of them may be the main protagonists of Resident Evil 9, it seems that we can get yet another iconic game with these two front and center. Let's face it, not much can stop Chris Radfield and Jill Valentine. So that does it for this episode of Nerdspace Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think of my list. Is Joe and Chris the best duo of the franchise or is there another duo that deserves that title? Let me know down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you like survival horror games. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. But thanks for watching and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerdspace Games. Take care.